The Aldis Podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our ServiceNow series, where we interview the best and brightest of the industry to share their story, advice, and views on the exciting world of ServiceNow and digital transformation. Hi, it's Mark Kelly here. Hope you're having a super day wherever you are. You are listening to the Aldous Podcast. As part of our ServiceNow podcast series, I am very, very happy to welcome Jan Pennell to the show. Jan is a Senior ServiceNow Practice Lead at D2M Services, a division of Dicey's. And she's going to give us a wealth of knowledge and information in the show. And you join the conversation as Jan is telling us a little bit about her journey to now and some of the work that she does in her day-to-day job. Without further ado, please find our conversation with Jan Pennell. I've been in the service management space for about 20 years, and and it really started from a process and people perspective. Um, I've worked with a number of legacy technologies, but my my passion is very much around customer success, providing them a great experience and achieving outcomes, and and ServiceNow has been, been a phenomenal platform in enabling that passion. And how did you get into the world of service now? What was your first interaction with it? You know, I, I, um, I've been working with service now, you know, since the Berlin release. And the first exposure I had to it was one of our customers was migrating um, off of a legacy tool and had a significant opportunity with service catalog and request management. Um, It was a large, you know, oil and gas global company, high volume of requests coming in, you know, but a lot of it was unstructured and they found ServiceNow as a solution. And as they started to look at it, really moved toward a one-stop shop service catalog. Employees could go to it, get what they need. The results that they were looking for was really, you know, improving the the user experience and reducing cycle time so people could get what they need faster. And that was really the service catalog component um, of ServiceNow was really my first exposure to it. And tell us a little bit about the work that you do at Dices and people listening in that actually never heard of Dices before. Maybe give us a little bit of an overview about that. No, absolutely. Um, Dices has been around um, since 1994. Um, They're predominantly and have grown up as a staffing firm, one of the largest in the industry, and about 10 years ago started to invest in their services um, organization and their professional services and managed services. And so um, we've got locations in the U.S., in Canada, Europe, India, and Brazil, it's um, our managed service function, you know, is very focused on outcome driven solutions um, and accelerating productivity. Brilliant. So comprehensive overview there. So if we're starting off a conversation, problem definition and the type of problems that you'd be working on with a with a customer, how important is it to get this right? And how do you actually go on the journey and working on the most effective problem? Because we know that you can solve a problem, but if it isn't worth solving, then it can actually sometimes do more harm than good because there's a real missed opportunity across organizations. And the challenge is, is is being able to maintain commitment if you're working on a problem that doesn't actually move the dial internally within an organization. No, absolutely. Um, From a problem definition, outcomes clarity standpoint, um, that is is one of the most essential components as you start a journey toward producing work, that without that clear um, definitive understanding of what your efforts are intended to produce, that people will talk about, you know, being output focused or outcome focused or impact focused. And, and it's really making sure that you understand what's the outcome you're trying to achieve, whether that's um, a problem being solved or um, a change being made, and then what's the impact of those um, opportunities. 
that you may have an outcome where the cake is baked, but the impact is hungry people are now happy and enjoying that cake. And so just understanding the outcome and the impact you're going for is critical. So is there some examples that you can share about some of the problems that you've worked on and the journey as a guide to getting them implemented? And then some of the challenges on that on that journey and then some return on investment, some that we can kind of see and as for the novice listening in, maybe you could kind of be as, as explicit going through those details. No, absolutely. Um, if, if I go back to the service catalog example, um, when we started the effort, the average cycle time for their standard requests was somewhere between six and seven days that the back and forth with what was needed, um, what details needed to be provided by different people just lacked coordination. But by structuring the intake, by getting it to the right group the first time, having a defined workflow, that got reduced down to closer to about three, three and a half days on average for standard requests. When you look at um, another example would be around um, service portals that we worked with a higher education firm who interacted with students, faculty, staff to get um, services provided across the university. The problem that they were trying to solve was really to, to build a community through technology where people could get what they needed as quickly as possible. As we went through the project, there were a number of, of new features and new capabilities that came up. And, and what we continued to go back to was, does that help actually build the community? That customers don't necessarily want features and functions. They want to solve their problem. They want to get their outcome. So you just keep asking yourself again, are we getting the outcome that those customers want? And this feature that we're actually adding what, what value does it add? Are we reducing time? Is there efficiencies? Is this reducing costs? Is there a better customer experience? And you talk a little bit about that three and a half days, but you could, that, that's tangible. That's, that's time that people can spend on higher value tasks, more time to them. You know, so that really positively impacts morale as well, because people can sometimes forget about the morale within an organization of doing a task that isn't adding value that could be automated and you're you're kind of you're stacking up some wins for future projects to work on too no absolutely i mean and, and in terms of um one of the things that i've found really interesting throughout my career is is you talk about the um positive impact on employees the people who are consuming the service are certainly one impact, but when you look at the people who are developing the solutions, um, the focus on impact and outcome, and as an individual, whether you're a developer or a business analyst, your value is added, um, increases when you have more clarity to the outcome and impact that your effort leads to that the effort applied by individuals is going to provide much greater value when they're well grounded in what the outcomes are. So in, in typical projects, you have a project sponsor and a champion. They can absolutely talk about the business objectives of the organization, the output and the outcomes that need to be delivered and the impact. As a project manager, milestones, managing scope, schedule and budget, that's all phenomenal. What differentiates the elite project managers are the ones who can really help the teams understand the outcome and the impact from their efforts. That if you come to work every day knowing that your contribution is going to impact a business objective, it makes a real difference. How important is communication? to a variety of different stakeholders who may not be technical, who cannot articulate what they want, but they know what they want, if you get me. No, absolutely. I mean, communication um, and, and interpersonal skills 
are our top are top of the list for me and they always have been that when you bring a team together making sure that everyone understands what the team's objective is at a corporate level you know your c suite has to identify what the business objectives are out of that every functional area each service has a contribution that they make to those strategic objectives as it cascades deeper and deeper into the organization, it becomes that much more critical for leaders to be able to take the vision and the strategy, identify what the contributions are from a function, from a team, from an individual within that team, so that when I come to work every day, I'm able to see how my work contributes all the way up. You know, the last thing people want is to feel like they're on that little hamster wheel running around that that never mistake activity and effort for results because people want to go to work each day and move forward they want to they want to solve problems they want to add value and just along the way bureaucracy happens working on problems that don't move the dial and political environment can really sap people's energy so so this is very very effective for particularly the c-suites to understand what they're looking to drive win the hearts and minds of people and work on meaningful projects and and it's really kind of shaping that vision tell us a little bit about some of the exciting features of ServiceNow and where it's going. We've seen some mergers and acquisitions uh, of AI companies. We've seen a lot of drive for self-service, not to mention um, Citizen Zero and the investment within um, making it free for the sysadmin course up until August, and that probably will be extended. Where do you see ServiceNow going, the platform? What, what's coming down the track? No, absolutely. I mean, I do think the citizen developer movement um, is picking up a lot more speed in organizations that that have that culture, that they're ready to embrace it. That um, that trend in the industry, people, organizations are really going to be able to take a lot of value. Again, back to knowing the outcomes. If you have more and more people who can develop those applications, making sure that they're well grounded in where the value will come from from their time is huge. The the other really amazing um, recent launch by ServiceNow is their impact product that Aaron Falkerson and the team did an amazing job really focusing on how do customers get the most value from the platform, that it's not an inexpensive journey, but it does have huge returns for organizations that embrace it for what it is. An impact provides accelerators, provides an impact squad, and, and really helps customers see the value that they're getting from the platform. I love how proactive they, they're being about that. And it doesn't have to be inexpensive. You know, you, ha you have to look at it and actually think, okay, what do I need from this platform as a fundamental? And then what can I build on in the future? Because you're finding that people are getting this visualization, it's, it's getting done, it's starting to become table stakes. So people want to move on and start to utilize different services, CSM, and, and try to go to that next stage. But they're only going to do that when they feel like they're getting the value from the basics. And is actually showing internally that this is worth going on this journey to continue the investment uh, to do that. And for a lot of organizations who don't feel like they're, they're making that inroad, a lot of them, they'll, they'll give up or there's lack of morale. And so it's important to get that right. And I think they're doing a great job and actually utilizing the impact to help people go on that journey. No, absolutely. I, I, I agree completely. You've been listening to the All This podcast as part of our ServiceNow series. I'm really, really happy to say I've been speaking with Jan Pennell. And Jan has been giving us a little bit of an overview about her journey to now, how she got involved in ServiceNow and the utilization of that. We talked a little bit about some examples about return on investment and actually introducing the product that people can utilize in a very effective manner. We also talked a little bit about senior, senior level engagement and how senior level stakeholders and C-suites particularly have a duty of care to make sure that they're winning the hearts and minds of people, but they're solving problems worth solving and really having communication and transparency at the core of what they do. Jan, thank you so much for your time today. 
Thanks for having me, Mark. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.